Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. I introduce today's guest, who is back by popular demand with a special guest of her own. So today we have Healthy Emmy, but she's got somebody with her who's known as Healthy Mummy, but she also has a name, and her name is Lisa, and she's going to talk about some challenges she experienced going through menopause with weight gain, but now that she eats like Healthy Emmy, she is looking like healthy Emmy and they're going to make either poke bowls or poke bowls but they're full of starch and full of veggies and they sound delicious and please welcome them both to the show it's very nice to see you again and nice to meet you for the first time you as well thank you for having us and bear is here he knew it was time um yes that is so funny that cats like they know this happened on the earlier show it's like the cats know when the camera's on and Mm -hmm. then they wake up Absolutely. They love the spotlight. So yes, thank you for having us. Absolutely. So, so uh, healthy mummy, yes. Lisa, yes. did you eat like Emmy before or, or was it because of this that you, you changed? I changed because of Emmy directly. Yes. In about 2015, uh, we were visiting her in London and had the opportunity to try a lot of vegan restaurants and that just sort of started the process for me. That's incredible. So w- were you having any health challenges or anything or was it just because she looked and felt so great well i think a little bit of both you know i do have high cholesterol issues and um as we've talked about a million times that postmenopausal life will wrapped around your waist um and, and weight gain that i couldn't shake through exercise well it seems like you shook it now yes <laughs> yes yeah. thank you <laughs> oh that's fantastic so was it was it a hard sell emmy there were trials and tribulations you know when she first went plant-based it was kind of the chigan and a lot of avocado toast and trying out vegan desserts and so we're still struggling with high cholesterol and with the post-menopause weekend and then recently as was documented on my youtube channel in the healthy mummy series almost two years ago we really buckled down and actually had her go through my program Mm -hmm. she really tightened up and her diet would definitely be approved by you aj to a more gold hammer approved type of diet and that's when her cholesterol finally came down Mm -hmm. and the weight came off so you know some people genetically 90 percent doesn't work and we learned that she was one of those people that 90 percent she'd still have high cholesterol so she really is a totally whole foods plant-based sofas free Mm -hmm. eater now yes that's amazing i love to hear that because it just shows it's never too late you know because so many people just don't want to go on the medication Exactly. Agreed. Yeah. And the doc, her doctor said to her when her high cholesterol came back as high, uh, you can do three months with me or you can go on a statin. So mm-hmm. we took our three months together. She really buckled down and her cholesterol came down and yep. didn't have to go down that path. My doctor said, just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. Did, did, did anyone else in the family join you? I, I'm guessing maybe there's the, uh, I yes. think you, had, you said you had a brother yes. once. And I, uh, I think one, a my too. husband, I think, which is the biggest um, shock of anybody that uh, he read the start solution and he never looked back either. And it's like a different person. Yeah. So he used to be obese and he now is in a healthy weight range, actually weighs less than he did when he graduated from college, which he said was his fighting weight. So the two of them, whenever I go to their house, I'm going to get an oil-free, whole food, plant-based, McDougal-approved meal, which is amazing. That's amazing. Well, maybe we'll have a healthy daddy series. (laughs) Buckle up. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, we're going to be making our favorite bowls today, and we also are going to be sharing our weight loss secrets. So I have prepared three tips, and Healthy Mummy has prepared three tips. Mm -hmm. So as we construct our bowls, we're going to go back and forth and give our secrets and our tips, if that's okay with you. Oh my God, I can't wait. Okay, (laughs) perfect. So do you want to start or would you like me to begin? Um, You go ahead. You start first. Okay, sure. So I'm going to start with assembling my bowl and I'm going to start with my first tip. Um, I guess I will start with my tip first and then we'll get into the food. So the first tip that I have, I am very big on mindset and when clients work with me, they also work with a nutrition coach and a mindset coach because it's not always just what you're eating, but it's also what's eating you and what's going on beneath the surface that's causing a ruptured relationship with food. 
So I got this advice from one of the mindset coaches that works within my program. And she was telling a client to remove the word try from your, vo from your vocabulary. So that is my first tip, remove try from your vocabulary. What this means is that instead of saying, I'm trying to eat a McDougal diet or I'm trying to lose weight, when you use the word try subconsciously, you're given the option of failing and of not following through. If we remove, I'm trying to lose weight or I'm trying to eat McDougal, you say, I am eating a McDougal approved diet. I am working on my relationship with food as opposed to trying to really get you into that next chapter. So be cognizant of the language that you're using with yourself. And if you find that you're using, I'm trying not to eat sweets. I'm trying to stay away from those foods. Instead say, I'm not eating sweets. I am staying away from those foods to really get you into that next chapter. So that's my first tip. And I guess with my first tip, I'll introduce my ingredients then you can do your tip mm -hmm. and introduce your ingredients Great. and then we'll assemble. Great. So my ingredients for my favorite bowl, I have white rice. Um, I'm fine with having white rice. If your weight loss is stubborn, you might want to use brown rice, but I'm in weight maintenance and I'm having white rice. And then I also have greens. As you're gonna see when I assemble this bowl, I do not go shy on the greens. Load up on the leafy greens. That's a mistake that I see when people make bowls is they'll do a ton of rice and then they'll sprinkle a little bit of greens, but you really wanna go in on the greens. I also have a seed mix here. If you are looking to lose weight, you might wanna hold off on this. If you're in weight maintenance, then this would be fine to have. This is a mix of white and black sesame seeds, nutritional yeast, crushed nori and sunflower seeds. Then I have some edamame. This is just frozen edamame that I let thaw. Very easy as opposed to getting the edamame in pods and I got it from Whole Foods. It's called shelled edamame and it's the edamame that is already out of the pods. I have some avocado. Again, if you're looking to lose weight, you might wanna hold off on the avocado and just double the veggies. But if you're in weight maintenance, then this is fine to have. I have some cubed mango. Again, I bought this frozen, which I highly recommend because it is hit or miss when it comes mm -hmm. to mangoes and sometimes they're hard as a rock. So the cubed mango, it's already cubed, it's frozen, it's ready to go. And again, I just let this thaw. I have some roasted red peppers. If you are salt free, you would wanna just have red bell peppers as opposed to the roasted red peppers because there is some salt in these. I have some liquid aminos and then I have a cucumber and those are going to be my ingredients. Um, but I will pass it over to Healthy Mummy and mm -hmm. Healthy Mummy is gonna give us her first tip. My first tip would be that your refrigerator and your cabinets should be stocked and ready daily. I always run into trouble when there's not um, good plant-based foods for me to go to when I'm hungry. So I always batch cook, I always have things to grab, there are no chips, cookies, ice creams, anything like that in the house anymore. Um, and I always use Emily's tip when I'm hungry. Would I eat a fruit, veg, or starch? Um, if the answer is yes, when I think I'm craving something else, then I always go for that. Um, I find that that has saved me um, in the long run. You can never have too much available um, in your fridge and cabinets. That's my first tip. Can I interject here? Of course. This just reminds me of something that we've talked about on the channel before is that the four o'clock hour was always very difficult for you Yes. because that's when you said you would sit down and watch Oprah with peanut butter crackers <laughs> right. and a tea. And so now you've replaced that. And at that time, if you crave peanut butter crackers or you, you start to get hungry, that's okay. Humans are supposed to get hungry. Mm -hmm. It's just re responding to it with something like this Correct. as opposed to the peanut butter crackers. Correct. That's right. That's right. So for my bowl, I start with my base of, I like wild rice and quinoa. I prepared all this earlier today. Um, and then I water saute with my favorite seasonings. I start with mushrooms and I saute with garlic powder, onion powder, pepper. And then I have some uh, fresh butternut squash that I cubed. I put some paprika in there, uh, salt, pepper, and then some broccoli, fresh, that cooks up very quickly. 
And then the quickest of all, of course, is fresh spinach, which uh, wilts down in no time. And that's a florist word. Yes, it's in <laughs> three boxes. <laughs> Those are my favorite go-tos. I may um, switch up um, and put some asparagus in perhaps sometimes or in the summertime, um, some zucchini, but that's my base that I like. And I put my liquid aminos in the rice already. And I just brought some fresh lemon today just to sprinkle on top. AJ, is anything going on in the chat that we should talk about before I get into my next tip? Yeah, I was just going to say there's, there's a few questions and comments, but I did want to say that they have restaurants that make these bowls, but it's so much cheaper to do it at home. Oh, definitely. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So, let, yes. Let me, oh, do, do you want, do you want to wait, want me to wait till the end for the questions or say them to you as they come in? If they're coming in, go for it. Okay, good, because there's quite a few. And uh, let's see. Well, the first one is from Samuel, Felicia. How did Emmy get into this type of lifestyle so young? So I am a runner and I run a marathon. I'm very into running. I grew up running. I remember when I was little, I used to ask you if I could run around the block <laughs> just because I loved to run so much and always wanted to be the best, strongest, fastest runner I could be because I'm very competitive. <laughs> and so I was looking up the best diet for runners and I found Rich Roll. And with finding Rich Roll and learning about the plant-based lifestyle, I decided to adopt a plant-based lifestyle so that I could be the best, fastest, stronger runner possible. And when I decide I'm gonna do something, <laughs> I do it. And I hit the ground running. So that day I was 19 and I actually, I was nannying at the time. It was in the summer mm -hmm. and it, I was in college and I um, had brought my lunch for that day which had animal products in it. And I remember throwing it in the trash and bringing the kids to the grocery store and buying a plant-based meal because from that moment on, wow. I said, I'm gonna be vegan mm -hmm. and- I didn't know that. Haven't looked back. Mm -hmm. Now I'm 27. <laughs> oh my God, that's fantastic. All right, I saw another, I saw a question from Lori. I'll be right there, Lori. Oh, here we go. Uh, did they share how much weight they've lost? I'd love to know the details, especially from another postmenopausal woman. Mm -hmm. How much starch or plates were they eating during the weight loss? How much exercise and how long did it take to get where they are? Are they still eating the same weight in maintenance? Mm -hmm. So I'll just, and you can add on to yeah. this. In the Healthy Mummy series, we documented her starting weight which this is on my YouTube channel. And then uh, we waited, I think it was a month before you weighed in again. Mm -hmm. And I showed you your weight and your <laughs> jaw shocked. dropped. She couldn't believe how much weight she had lost within just a month. Mm -hmm. So I think you went from like one four, she's a million feet tall. Mm -hmm. You're five, 10, 20. five, 11. Yeah. No. And you, yeah. you lost how much weight? Uh, probably around 20 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you want to talk about your exercise and what you eat in a day? Yes, my exercise has changed a lot the older that I've gotten. I no longer kill myself. Um, I walk daily and I do yoga daily. Um, that's about it and it's, it serves me just fine. And then do you want to go through what you eat in a day? I start out with um, oatmeal in the morning with um, some blueberries and some chia seeds and shredded carrots, believe it or not. Um, for lunch, I either have something along these lines or my doctored up Dr. McDougall soups, which I love. Um, I make them all in advance so that when I'm ready to go to work, I have it and I go. And then for dinner, um, Healthy Dad, uh, since he's retired before me, has taken over uh, making dinners and he makes great plant-based dinner every night. And to answer the question about has our diet changed at all, when I first got into this lifestyle, I would hold off on things like the avocado or the seeds. Um, but now I've been on this lifestyle for so long and I'm pretty sure that this is the weight that I'll be at for most of my adult life that I'm comfortable incorporating some of the, the higher calorie richer foods like avocado, nuts, and seeds. And then for Healthy Mummy, mm -hmm. when she first went on my program to get her cholesterol down, we were very adamant about you not having any of the overt fats. Right. And then she was getting so skinny that I said, you have to bring in some more of these overt right. fats. And pasta. I, was, I didn't have any pasta while I was trying to um, lose, and now it's part of my maintenance. Yes. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. So I can talk about my second tip. 
Um, my second tip is to intentionally plan a social outing where you go to a restaurant and you get something that you know is whole food plant-based oil free. And the reason why I make this a tip is that many people find a barrier in being able to make this their lifestyle because eating at restaurants is difficult. It's hard if you're on this lifestyle. So if you, if you have that mentality that I can do this in the house, but when I go to restaurants, I just go eat whatever I want, then this probably isn't going to be something sustainable for you. And we want to make sure that you can do this in the long term with your friends and family and, and going everywhere that you want to go. So I would intentionally plan uh, an outing at an Asian restaurant or a sushi, sushi restaurant or a steakhouse, believe it or not, where you can get a baked potato and steamed veggies so that you can prove to yourself, okay, I really can make this a part of my lifestyle. And that's my second tip. And I will begin to assemble my bowl. So I have my white rice. I'm gonna take my greens. These are just baby leafy greens. They're nice and crunchy. And like I said, do not be shy when you put the greens on top. By the way, I put the rice on bottom and then I put the greens on top because what you don't wanna do is put the rice on top, put all the good stuff on top, and then you eat all that and then you get to the greens and you go, I don't want those anymore. So you put the rice on bottom and put the greens on top to avoid that from happening. So I'll put on my greens, do not be shy. And then with everything that I have here, there's really no cooking required. I actually bought the frozen rice and just put it in the microwave. So now I'm just gonna put on everything that you see in front of me. So I'm gonna put on my edamame. The mango. Roasted red peppers. Avocado. And then I found this, I don't know what you call this, but it's a, it's a sort of peeler that can peel cucumbers into strings, I guess you would say. So I'm just gonna use this to cut some some stringy cucumber. Oh, cool. Yeah, isn't that cool? And it just it just makes it look prettier. You could just chop up the cucumber, but this is a little bit more fun. So the cucumber is now in, in little ribbons, skinny ribbons, and I'll put that on top. And then I'm gonna put on the sesame mix. And then I just have some liquid aminos that have a cat hair in them that I just found. <laughs> <laughs> Everything tastes better. Everything tastes better with a little cat hair. <laughs> and I will put that on. And that is my beautiful poke bowl. By the way, I got these little glass uh, jars. They come in packs of four from the dollar store. Oh, cool. Believe it or not. And they're these beautiful little, you could buy this at Williams Sonoma for an arm and a leg, <laughs> or you could get four of them from the dollar store. <laughs> So that's my little poke bowl. So I'm gonna pass it over to Healthy Mummy to do her second tip. And Emmy, do you put any sauce or dressing on it? I put some liquid aminos on and the sesame mix, those two, you don't need anything else. Nice. AJ, I came up with my second tip yesterday. I was in Boston for an appointment and there was a Wegmans. Where we live, we have so many choices, as I'm sure many people do, of supermarkets. So many choices. So I went into this Wegmans and I was so overwhelmed by the amount of product in that store and it started to really bum me out because I couldn't even decide what to even look at or get. So my tip is to find a grocery store that you like and feel comfortable in that carries what you enjoy. Uh, there's a Whole Foods that I like that I don't do all my shopping at. Um, we do all our most shopping at another grocery store but they have certain things that I eat all the time. I know they have them. I go in, I know where they are, and I'm not distracted by other possibilities, and I don't get into trouble with buying items that I don't need. Um, so I just feel, sometimes I think um, people, you know, it's sort of, they're a little scared of this lifestyle and, and how to even navigate it. So to know what you like, know where you can get it, and stick to it. 
And I, when I was in college, I grocery shopped at Walmart. You can, you don't need any, you know, people say, oh, we don't have a Trader Joe's. We don't have a Whole Foods. Mm, you don't totally fine. I've lived here. I've lived in London. I lived in Australia. And mm. I was able to, to maintain this lifestyle the whole time. You don't need any fancy grocery stores. Right. So just go to the one that you feel comfortable with. Right, right. So for my bowl, as I said, I've got my rice and my quinoa and my uh, broccoli. I just put in. And I find with this type of bowl, as opposed to a soup, that fresh really does make the difference. And soups frozen is wonderful and so convenient. You should always have plenty of frozen veg in your freezer. You can make a soup in no time. My mushrooms, and then my spinach. And as I said, I've already got liquid aminos on there and I'm just gonna squeeze some fresh lemon juice because I just happen to have some lemons um, at home. And I'm so glad that um, Emmy and AG invited me to be on because now I'm working this weekend and I have all kinds of great lunches <laughs> all set and ready to go and take to work. Yeah, batch cooking. Do both of you do some kind of batch cooking? Yeah. She is the queen of batch cooking. Yeah. Because... I find it very relaxing to tell you the truth. It's so satisfying because it's just calming and it's done and it's in the fridge and everything looks nice and you are set. Mm -hmm. There's no worrying about what you're going to have to eat. I have the luxury of working from home. Healthy Mummy is a hospital nurse, and as many nurses know, there is it's amazing the food that you run into at the hospital. Mm -hmm. There's always bringing in things for the nurses, mm -hmm. so she has, you never, ever go to work without your breakfast and lunch. I don't, well, I don't ever. Yep. They're, they always, I used to volunteer at a hospital, actually I was a respiratory therapy once, and, and mm. there's so much junk oh that's given God. to nurses, like, <laughs> as a thank you. In a hospital. <laughs> Sometimes I get texts from her, you'd be so proud for me. They brought in Dunkin' Donuts and right. I am sitting here with my food bowl. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that, you would think hospitals would maybe have a little bit healthier food these days. You would think. I know. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately That's not. Crazy. Here's a question from Jordan. Oh gosh, it just jumped. I'm so sorry. Uh, but, uh, it was a good one. It was about it was about emotional eating. Sorry, at my chat closed really really fast compared to everybody else's. Oh, and I saw it. Darn. Okay. Well, here I'll I'll take this one first, and I'll I'll find the question from Jordan. This is Susanna wants to know how does Mummy store her batch cooked food in the refrigerator and freezer? Mm -hmm. um, it, mostly, I put it in the fridge, and you do need to eat it in a timely fashion. It won't last more than three four days. Um, and I just have your basic Rubbermaid um, containers, you know, the ones that can stack. Um, I find that carrying, I would like to put them in glass, but carrying, a, I bring so much food to work and carrying those heavy glass bowls is a lot. So that's what I put them in, just Rubbermaid uh, square rectangular containers. Bella says, does Emmy still eat salt free? I don't own any salt, so there's no salt in my house. And it's funny whenever my brother comes, where is the salt? I don't have any here. So I don't add any salt to my food. If I go out to a restaurant and there's salt, I don't mind. Same here, I know, and little condiments here and there. I, I saw this question from Jordan and I cannot find it now. Oh, and it was a very good one. It was about emotional eating, but I'm gonna find it. And in the meantime, I'm gonna ask, um, oh, here it is, thank you. Do you have any advice for those trying to lose weight who struggle with emotional eating and overeating on starches? I always tell people they're not overeating on starches, they're under eating on vegetables. <laughs> yes, so there's a lot to dig through here. Something that I find with the plant-based lifestyle is that many people come to it because they have distrust with themselves around food and they say, oh my goodness, a lifestyle where I can eat as much as I want. I'm just gonna go to town on these foods. And they stuff themselves silly, even on vegetables, even on potatoes, they go crazy on it because they say, finally, I don't have to address my relationship with food and whether or not I trust food. So I'm just gonna go and eat as much of this plant-based food as I want. Ask yourself what it's giving you by doing that. Doing it is giving you some positive emotion, whether it is comfort, whether it's excitement, joy, pleasure, um, numbing out for a moment. Ask yourself what you're going for by doing it because you're getting something positive from it. And then ask, how else can I get that feeling? How else can I get joy? How else can I get relaxation? How else can I get pleasure? How else can I get relief from the stress of my job? And then the second thing that I would encourage you to do when it comes to overeating and emotional eating, 
I would ask you to ask yourself, where else in, in my life have I displayed having trust in myself and it's gone really well? Uh, I'll give you an example for my for myself. When I was 23, I decided to move to Australia and I didn't know anybody there and I just decided to move. And that was an experience in my life where I trusted my gut and it went really well. Um, for somebody that has decided to pursue a degree, that might be an example of when you decide to trust yourself and it went really well. Where else have you trusted yourself outside of food? Consider these occasions, write as many as you can, as many occasions where you've trusted yourself and it's gone really well, to prove to yourself that you can trust yourself and say, I've trusted myself in all of these other areas in my life, why don't I try to trust myself around food and go into food not thinking that I'm going to eat too much of it or that I have to restrict it and instead allow myself to eat as much of it as my body truly needs. That's fantastic. Thank you. And we have a question about bread from Joanne. She says, I love hearing about a post-menopausal plant-based diet. I always blame my thyroid for my ability to lose weight, but it may be overt fats and bread. Do either of you eat bread at all now that you're in maintenance? Mm -hmm. So Healthy Mummy was the avocado toast queen yes, before we started really hunkering down. And once that went, so did the spare tire. Right. As we said, she was getting so, it was every time I see you, I said, you're gonna disappear. You can't turn sideways or I'm not gonna be able to see you. So we started to pull back in some bread and some avocado. Um, and I actually have a video on my channel that is how to decide what bread is the best to buy at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. But I'll have bread if I go to a restaurant or if Healthy Dad makes oil-free eggplant sandwiches that are really good. Mm -hmm. So we'll have some bread then. Yeah. Um, when you talk about bread, it brings up for me the point that other than fresh fruits and vegetables, potatoes, rice, starches that don't have labels, bread is a good example of label reading if you're going to buy things like that. I buy a Neshoba Valley um, bread that is simply, um, you know, it's wheat, water, it's yeah. water and wheat, that's it. It doesn't have a litany of additives to it. So I think that's important in your in your choices. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and like I said, I have a video on my channel where I show you exactly how to read. It's what's the best bread to buy. Search what's the best bread to buy healthy Emmy, mm -hmm. and it will come up. <laughs> nice. Well, let's see. Laura says I'm 67 and I've never had an issue with menopause. Do you think all the hype and commercials telling women they need relief adds to the anxiety? Oh, 100 percent. Absolutely, 100%. It's your own individual journey. Um, you should um, embrace it and not uh, be swayed by anything that you're hearing that has advertising behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something very interesting is that in Japan, there's actually no word for, or there, there is now, now that the Americanized diet is over there, but they didn't have a word for hot flash because that was a, a result of the standard American diet. The reason why when we get hot flashes and get excess weight gain around the stomach after menopause is because of the huge drop in estrogen, which wouldn't happen if people weren't eating such a high animal products diet, diet that makes estrogen so high. Um, so it sounds like the woman who commented this has probably been eating whole foods same place for a while, mm -hmm. which would prevent that huge drop in estrogen in causing right. the weight gain. And I think, you know, from, from my perspective, menopause, you've worked so hard your whole life. Menopause is a certain age at which you should be able to enjoy yourself and feel comfortable in your body. Um, and that's what this diet has brought for me. That's so cool. Were you, since you work in a hospital, do any of the other nurses or healthcare professionals take notice of the change in you or have you been able to inspire yes, any of some them? Do. Or even any of your patients? Yes, absolutely. Some definitely do. and. Um, I am happy to discuss it with them if they want to. And some people just simply aren't ready or don't believe it yet. And I encourage them to watch their documentaries um, because boy, is that an eye opener. That's fantastic. The people, I don't, I'm not asking for your exact home address, but people are asking where you guys are from. Yeah, people. we're from right outside Boston. So we're in the Boston area. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. Cool. The food looks amazing. Thank How you. How about menopause and osteoporosis oh. being vegan? What about menopause and osteoporosis? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. So for as women get older, your muscle mass will decrease. And as your muscle mass decreases, your bones say, oh, well, I don't need to be strong anymore because she doesn't weigh as much anymore. Her muscles are getting weaker and weaker. And so I don't have to do my job anymore. So your bones will become weaker, which leads to osteoporosis. So to combat this, especially if you are a woman getting older, getting into the time of menopause, you want to do what we call weight bearing exercise, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean going to the gym and pumping iron. Walking is considered weight bearing exercise. And if you want to step it up a notch, uh, you could walk with a weighted vest so that your bones have purpose to stay strong. Healthy Mummy also makes sure to incorporate tofu to get some extra, extra calcium mm -hmm. into her diet. Yeah, absolutely. Like Dr. Barnard said, soybeans. Yes. Yep, exactly. Absolutely. Let's see if there's another question. If you guys have them, please put them in the chat. Uh, did you guys do any kind of intermittent fasting or stick to a window of eating while you were losing weight? I am not a fan of intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is that I see people set a window, usually people that have some distrust with food. So they say, okay, I'm not gonna eat until 12 noon and then I'm gonna stop at 6 p.m. And what happens is they get ravenously hungry, their eating window opens and they're so hungry that they end up overeating or they see their window closing and they say, oh no, I only have 40 minutes left of my window. I need to get in all the food. I'm really not a fan of things that encourage you to distrust your hunger fullness cues. I encourage people to listen to their body's hunger fullness cues. So neither of us subscribe to no. the idea of intermittent fasting. I really can't go very long without eating, to be honest with you. I do eat frequently throughout the day. Maybe the only thing that I've changed is that, as we've discussed in past videos, you know, I was raised in that breakfast is your most important meal generation. But when I go to work, I'm, on the, I'm at work to start at 7 a.m. and I'm not hungry at 5 a.m. at home. So I do push things out a little. You know, I'll have juice and some tea and then I'll have breakfast around nine. That's about the only thing that I've changed, but I have to eat frequently throughout the day, no doubt. Yeah, and one of, um, on my channel, I have a video with Healthy Mommy and Healthy Dad, and we just talk about, you know, we talk about their eating and their health journey and everything, but we also talk about their love story. And Healthy Dad said the thing that he loved about Healthy Mommy the most is that she eats. Yeah. <laughs> and she really can eat. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's funny how women think they, they, you know, I mean, when you when you understand the principles we, we both subscribe to, calorie density, you got to eat a lot more food and people are just shocked. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But that's what's so fun about it. Yeah. I mean, you can eat huge bowls and quite often, mm -hmm. especially when you load up on the greens. Right. Right. Um, Karen says, Emmy, we need a video on that eggplant sandwich. Oh. I know, healthy. I actually, so I, I did a video, you know, what I eat in a day the other day, it's posted on my YouTube, and I went over to their house and Healthy Dad made his Mexican food and all the comments were saying, you know, Healthy Dad needs to do his Mexican. So I texted Dad and I said, everybody wants you to do your Mexican in a video. And he wrote back, well, obviously. <laughs> and that's all he said. So we haven't scheduled it or anything, but... He loves to be on camera, so we can do that. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, how long have you both been eating this way, asked Sherry. Mm. Since 2015, mm -hmm. and it's 2022, yeah. so about seven years. That's great. And Cassie says, do either of you snack at all? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Definitely. I definitely snack. It's what I snack on that's changed uh, dramatically. As I said, no more chips, cookies, cakes, ice cream. Um, it would be, uh, you know, oil-free hummus and some Mary's Gone crackers or fruit and hummus or even it's good. I always say it's a good idea to have uh, some uh, teeny boiled potatoes in the fridge that you can just grab and put some lemon juice on, salt and pepper. Um, that's what I snack on now. Snack is a, is a dirty word. People think that snacking whenever you, oh, I, was, I mean, you have so much trouble snacking, snacking, snacking. I go... If your body's sending you a hunger cue, just react to it. It's it's not a bad thing if you're hungry at three o'clock. People say that they can't be hungry at three o'clock because that's not the right time to mm. eat. You know, I can't eat now. Well, of course 
course you can eat. If your body has sent you a hunger cue, it's what you eat, mm -hmm. not when or how much. Right. You know, if it's three o'clock, you could make one of these bowls right. if you wanted to, and that would satisfy you. Mm -hmm. What you don't want to do is try to avoid snacking, wait until six o'clock, the right time to eat, and be so hungry, and then end up overeating and making yeah. a bad decision. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. It's not, it's not when you eat, but what you eat. Right, mm -hmm. agreed. Very good, I love that. Let's see, I think. Uh, oh, did Healthy Mummy Crystal asks, drink extra water while losing weight or did all the fruits and vegetables supply enough? You know, it's an interesting question that I've been thinking about lately because I drink more water now than I ever did in my entire life. And I don't do it because I, I think that I'm supposed to. I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I just do. Um, I've cut out uh, coffee. I don't drink coffee anymore, which has cut down on the amount of um, plant-based milk that I was dumping into these lattes that I was making. Um, and I just enjoy it. And to be hydrated, it, it still amazes me to this day how much better you feel when you are well hydrated. So I didn't drink it to lose weight. I just, I just do now. I always have something with me to drink. One of the leading causes of crabbiness in kids is dehydration. Yeah. But yes, we did have to, I did have to take away the coffee from Healthy Mummy because of her cholesterol. Um, coffee does contribute to high cholesterol even if you have a perfectly clean diet. So mm -hmm. that did have to go. But what, what do you do instead now? Um, I sort of weaned myself off it by Emmy's suggestion to try tea chino, mm -hmm. um, which weaned me down. And now I'm drinking herbal teas, believe it or not, with nothing in them that I, I'm really enjoying. Um, that three week rule, what you think you can't live without it and then you wean yourself off it and you don't even miss it. And I'm so happy that you are no longer drinking coffee. Dr. Lyle has done some very interesting work on the link between coffee and Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy that that's not a part of your diet yes. anymore. Thank you. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Lisa, help. Uh, Raj wants to know how long did it take your cholesterol to go down? I think it was six, was it six months, three to six months? It was three months. It was three months. Three month. yeah. And I was nervous because I oh, go, I was a wreck. Yeah. <laughs> we were so nervous to check her results after three months because sometimes it does take a little bit longer with women. It can take up to six months for the cholesterol to go down, mm -hmm. but three months you were clean as a whistle. Right, right. I was as shocked as anybody, trust me. And that was a real turning point for me um, that I'm, I'm in this forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we first, when you first said, okay, I'm going to do this, we watched Forks Over Knives. Yeah, Forks Over Knives changed my life. Yeah, I think just and... seeing the animals. Yeah, and... not good. Yeah. Wow. But, you know, I've heard that, I think it's Montefiore Hospital in New York, they actually play that in the hospital. Could your hospital start playing that for some of the patients? They should. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Are you, what kind of nurse are you? Like a floor nurse, critical care? Yes, I, I'm, on a, I'm on an inpatient pediatric unit. Oh, well, yeah, so that's interesting. Do they, do they, because it's kids, do they feed them a lot of like cake and ice cream and things like that? Because, you know, after all, it's sad for a kid. I mean, sad for anybody to be in the hospital, yes. but a kid yeah, especially. They pretty much that's have, how they bribed uh, me when I was in the hospital to get me to go, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Ironically, I, I play both sides of the fence because uh, we do have children that are in for many, many reasons, but we also have a medical refeeding unit for um, eating disorders. So I see the whole gamut. Wow. Wow. Lori says, what time do you guys go to bed? How much sleep do you require? And do you need less sleep eating this way? <laughs> We are such grandmas. <laughs> it's pathetic. Uh, yeah, we like early nights. I go to bed very early and we are morning people yeah. through and through. Mm -hmm. I have to sleep at least nine hours. Mm -hmm. I cannot operate with anything yeah. less than Same that. Same here, eight or nine hours. And sleeping is kind of my superpower. The second my head hits the pillow, yeah, totally. I'm out like a light. Yeah. So I go to bed. Um, nine o'clock i would say yep same here you know me, I'm up me by too time. and I have, I have i'm going to see chris rock tonight oh I'm, good it was at nine and i'm thinking that's my bedtime how am i going to stay <laughs> awake now i am I'm, I'm too i love going to bed early because you go to bed early you get to wake up early yeah getting up early is everything I Do love that. That's my most productive time of the day. Yeah. Randy wants to know, did either or maybe do either of you drink alcohol? Mm -hmm. I do not drink a drop. 
I decided that when I was when I was 12, I decided that I wasn't going to be a drinker. And I'm 27, and I I don't drink a drop. Mm -hmm. um, but healthy mummy is a social. Yeah, drinker. I drink socially. If I go out with my friends, I will have one. Uh, sometimes in, in the summer, I'll make myself a drink, but I wouldn't consider myself a drinker at all. She says if she has more than one, it starts to get messy. It starts to get ugly. <laughs> yes, one. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Susanna says, when you say no oil hum hummus, do you use tahini? So yep. she buys the no oil hummus right. um, from Good Neighbors. Yes. And they do have sesame seed. Mm -hmm. So sesame seed is tahini. Mm -hmm. Um, we're not making our own hummus. <laughs> right. Nice. Uh, Mary, I mean, Laura says, just wondering if you both get checkups and what tests you get done. And if you ever get comments about your good numbers, which you both must have. Yeah. Well, we're up to the opposite ends of the spectrum. So yes, I, I am very well <laughs> checked. And uh, I just run pretty much the gamut for some, a female my age. Um, and yes, I mean, I only go to the doctor for phys annual physicals, really. That's it. Yeah, so I go for my annual physical. I always ask for a full lipid panel as well as B12 and vitamin D. We do live in Boston, mm -hmm. so it's not as easy to get vitamin D. But I'm always surprised by the fact that my vitamin D always seems to be fine. That's good. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, I saw a question. Does Healthy Emmy have a no oil hummus recipe to share? Ask Stephanie. I mean, it's pretty simple. You can just, you, you used to make your own hummus. Yeah, I mean, it, it could not be easier, really. Do okay. you want to share what you would make? When I've done it, I've used um, chickpeas and tahini and lemon juice and salt and pepper to taste. Really, that's it. I remember you would make it without even tahini, which, mm -hmm. here's a pro tip. If you want to make hummus without tahini, you can add in a little bit of baked sweet potato to make it nice and creamy, or you can add in some white beans to make it creamy mm -hmm. if you want to make it without the overt fats. Mm -hmm. I am a big fan of Good Neighbors Hummus. I am their number one, number one. I fan. know, they need to sponsor you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she bathes that in everything. <laughs> That's funny. I, I don't know if we have that brand out here, but I'll look for it. That's great. Uh, what healthy mummy what shift of the hospital do you work and how do you manage your eating at work mm -hmm. i've done them all over the years all of them and currently now i'm finally rewarded at this late stage of the game uh, with the day shift so i work 7a to 3p and as we've discussed earlier i now am always prepared i make my make my oatmeal um, and bring it and I my lunches my batch lunches are all lined up in the fridge in their little containers and i just grab and go I'm never without. She just totally undersold how hard she worked for her entire life because when we were very little, there's three of us, I have two older brothers, and when we were very little, she worked the overnight shift mm -hmm. and then would come and take care of us, wrap scallions. <laughs> and then when all through growing up until like two years ago, you worked the 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. shift. Right. And, the, and I had two jobs. I did have two nursing three, jobs at the same time. Three, three jobs. Yeah. She worked so hard. So now, yeah. finally, getting into retirement gets to work the best shift, right. the 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Wow. shift. Wow. Wow. That's fantastic. Uh, Priscilla says, my weight was at my highest when I worked as a nurse because I had no time to eat. Mm -hmm. How do you manage at work when you have no time to eat? Right. Um, the older you get, the more uh, self-advocacy that you practice and you... there. I don't sit down for a half an hour, trust me, it cracks me up, you're supposed to have a half an hour uninterrupted meal break off the unit. Who does that? Nobody, ever. Um, but I can sit down for 10 minutes, the, the floor is not gonna fall apart if I sit down for 10 minutes and eat. So that's what I do. Yeah. Sherry says, did stopping caffeine, coffee, improve your sleep quality or length? Yes, I, I find now the older that I get that coffee and even alcohol, if I have a drink, I will wake up in the middle of the night. And caffeine would do that to me all the time. But you know, you get on that caffeine roller coaster and it's hard to get off it. And now I sleep like a baby. <laughs> you mentioned you work with sometimes with eating disordered children. Are you noticing an increase in eating disorders and, and, and a decrease in the age of the children that are getting them? Sadly, yes. Uh, mental health has exploded since COVID and uh, eating disorders as well. 20 years ago, we would never have seen the volume that we see now and they can be quite young, 9, 10, 12. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's like that? I don't, it's multifactorial they feel. Um, 
there's a lot going on in the world that kids are like sponges that they absorb and we call it the collateral damage of COVID. Uh, the emotional and mental well-being of children has been dramatically impacted. Wow. A uh, question, is mommy planning on retiring soon? I am. If all goes according to Hoyle, I will be out uh, in December. Wow. Well, thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Where do you hang out most, Emmy, if people want to follow you? I have everything in the show notes, but do you hang out mostly on YouTube, Instagram? Where's your favorite place to be? My favorite, favorite place is YouTube. YouTube is my world. I love <laughs> YouTube. I post two videos a week, and I've, I've been doing two videos a week for, I started making videos in college and I've been making mm. two videos a week for like seven years. So I have a billion videos <laughs> on YouTube. I'm on TikTok and Instagram, but YouTube is really where we build a connection. <laughs> yep, I agree. That's my favorite. I, I don't quite get Instagram. I try, but it's just, I don't know. It's so different. Yeah. So do you guys do, um, Healthy Mummy, did you ever do a What I Eat in a Day video? Um, I don't think that I just do what Emily tells me to do. I have <laughs> she this, can't remember. I have this she whole has other life, and she calls me and tells me to come over. I come over and do what she tells. She's me. She's the best sport in the world. But yes, so if you go to my search on YouTube, Healthy Emmy, Healthy Mummy series, and there's an entire playlist where we've documented her entire journey, and there are what I eat in a day videos for her on there. And a very useful video is um, we documented what she was eating before. I took over mm -hmm. and I made replacements for what I needed to change, which mm -hmm. might be a very eye-opening uh, video for people to watch. Yeah. The beginning is difficult. There's no doubt about it, but it is so worth it. And you'll be so happy when you transition. Healthy dad now calls her tiny hiney. <laughs> That's funny. That's adorable. I mean, I know you love the potatoes from Hawaii, but they, they were having a problem with them for a while. I know. And you know, it's a one man show. That one man works so, so hard. Um, so I, I will always give him my dollar. I love those potatoes. <laughs> yeah, they're amazing. They're amazing. When I lived in LA, I could get them like in an actual store, but now just, just mail order. Um, question if you guys take any calcium supplements or any supplements mm. for that matter. I take a vitamin D supplement, and of late, I've taken I start taking a probiotic. So vitamin D, yeah, and a probiotic. Um, and to make sure, you know, as not that you're old, mm -hmm. but we make sure that she has tofu, which is fortified with calcium, to yeah. make sure that she's getting enough calcium. I do choose to get my calcium through food rather than supplements, and my calcium level's fine. Mm -hmm. And I just well, take the Leah says, I binge watched Healthy Mummy series a few times. <laughs> Thank you, Leah. Yep. And uh, does mummy have more energy for her job with this new way of eating? Yeah, I do feel, um, I really do feel younger. You know, when you get to this age, you can remember how you used to feel. And then you start to get, um, you know, in your 60s and you think, well, this must be what everybody's talking about. You know, I might as well just go curl up on the couch and give up. But when you're lighter, you're brighter. Uh, you can think more clearly. You definitely feel younger. Yep. And Elizabeth says, do either of you include flax or chia in your diet? Mm -hmm. I have chia every I have chia every day. And flax too, because I, I mix my um, oatmeal with cinnamon and flax meal. Mm -hmm. So I have a little, you know, bell jar of it. And I do a tablespoon of flax in my oats every day, which is great if you are... Um, if you're around my age and you want to make sure that your hormones are all looking good, it's it's great to include ground flaxseed. You do want to make sure it's ground so that you can actually absorb the lignans, uh, whereas whole flaxseed is more of a solution for constipation. And you don't have to grind your chia seeds. I just sprinkle them in the oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Priscilla says, how do your coworkers react about your healthy eating? Healthcare workers do not usually eat so healthfully. They don't. Um, I can no longer care about the opinion of others. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I can't. Uh, I, I, because I could say to some people, man, you really ought to call my daughter, but everybody's on their own journey, and, and I hope someday they'll get there. But um, it's true. It's a grind. That profession is a grind. Um, and it's easier to just grab really unhealthy things. It takes some planning to do this, but not that much. 
And you know, there's that, there's that quote, what other people think of us is none of our business. Mm -hmm. And however other people see us is just a projection of their reality and perhaps any insecurities that they have. You'll find that the people that are always making comments about what you're eating are very insecure with either their body weight or their diet. So mm -hmm. we just keep doing us and looking fabulous right. while doing it. It's working for me. I'm, I'm curious, mommy, do people tell you you're too thin? Oh yeah, I get that. I do get that. And, um, I'm not, I know I'm not too thin, I'm not. Um, but I think sometimes some people want you to just sort of be, look more like them, it makes them feel better maybe. Yeah, absolutely. I like what she said at the beginning, I mean, about try, because I think about Yoda, do or do not do, yes. there's no try. And, and like 45 years ago, I had an acting teacher who had that philosophy and, and people kept saying, well, I, I'll try. And she would take a pencil and throw it down and she'd go, try to pick up that pencil. And they pick it up. She goes, no, see, because you can't try. You either do it or you don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Really try. And so, so Joan said, and this is so funny because I was going to say the same thing, is uh, do a YouTube with Healthy Dad. He's the cook in the family. So the next time you come on, so every time you come on, you'll just bring on <laughs> another family member. <laughs> the fact that and, Until you run out. You know, that's kind of what we did. I'm trying to think. There was a guest that I kept doing that with each time they brought... I've, got, I've done almost a thousand shows. I can't remember, but there was a guest that literally every time, like it was a different family member. So AJ, you, you would totally get along with Healthy Dad because you're a comedian and he thinks he's a comedian. <laughs> so that would be a fun show. Oh yeah, and maybe he'll actually cook something. He, he will. He really is very talented in the kitchen. Yeah. Oh, he's I pretty can't proud wait. of himself. I can't yeah. wait. Well, Lori says you both look fantastic, and Meryl says, "Will you adopt her?" I'm not sure which one of you she wants to be adopted <laughs> by. <Sure>. <laughs> Layla says, I've been so inspired by Emmy's videos. So, yeah. Yay. That's very cool. Well, you guys are fun. It's so nice to have a mom doing this. You know, I don't have, I haven't had parents in over 20 years, and I keep thinking, God, if my mom had gotten this information, she good, good chance she could yeah. still be alive, Perhaps, you know? Yes. Yeah. So, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. It's the best it's the best well thanks for the work you do because i just love that i love people that eat plants because everybody's going to resonate with somebody and we need a lot more people doing this because yep. we got a planet earth that's suffering yep, and for sure more people yep so did one of you say something about probiotics i just saw a question about them i don't just yeah, yeah. so helping mommy does take a probiotic i always am i don't recommend people to just go blindly take a probiotic I think probiotics should be a last resort if you've, you're already eating whole food plant-based, you've done everything you can for your gut health, and your gut still needs a little bit more help, then that might be something that you'd want to turn to with the help of a gastro doctor, not just blindly no, going I, and getting them. Uh, I had uh, been seeing an osteopath uh, for another issue, and that's how that was recommended to me. Are there any plant-based doctors in the Boston area? Mm. Not no, that no. I know of. I mean, there's plantbaseddocs.com, which you could find and see one, but we're we're very lucky because both of our PCPs are very understanding of the way that we eat mm -hmm. and didn't really bat an eyelash when we no. said that we were plant-based. And certainly didn't say don't do that at all. Yeah. Is that like the biggest island ever in your kitchen? <laughs> I'm trying to get rid is, is that like, like the world's largest kitchen island? <laughs> Optical <laughs> illusion. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Just, Actually, I when I so you, when you walk to get the cat, I'm like that took a <laughs> when I uh, when I you know chose everything for this house. They you could do a standard island or you could do a giant island, and I paid extra for the giant, giant island. island. <laughs> that, that, that's really really cool. Here's another question I just saw, and, and this one's for you, Emmy, from Priscilla. How did you convince your parents to eat whole food, plant based? I'm working so hard to help my husband. Well, AJ, something that I've always heard you say is a man convinced his will uh, against his will is of the same opinion still. So we can't force anybody to do anything. People are only going to change when they're ready to change. I was, like I said, I was 19 when I started eating this way. So what, how old is 60 year old dad is going to listen to their 19 year old daughter. So I let the experts do the talking and I actually sent him the starch solution for his birthday, thinking nothing would happen from it. And then he called me a month later and said, you know, I've lost 20 pounds. 
Um, but again, don't, don't exhaust yourself try, trying to change people. Mm -hmm. Lead by example, focus on yourself, and when they're ready, they will come over to this lifestyle. I wish we could change people. I so badly wish we could. Our lives would be so much easier in so many facets, right. but we can't, we can't change yeah. people. So you, you have one sibling? Emmy, one brother? I have two. Um, yes, I have two older brothers. Yes, I mean, when you first start out, especially when you have immediate success, you start to get a little cocky and you think, oh, great, I can go back to what I was doing and you can't. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're only human. Um, it's like this, you know, on your way up. Um, but it just, for me, reinforced that this was the way to go. And Healthy Mummy, she went plant-based as we said seven years ago but it took about four tries yeah. before she got to doing this definitely so there is you know trials and tribulations i made a video we made a video talking about this because people see chapter 20 of your story but there were 19 chapters right. before that where you're really trying movie. to mm -hmm. get a hang of it yeah very cool well guys it's so fun talking to you and the recipes you made look easy and delicious you too aj thank, thank you, you so much, much. Thank you for having I us. Have fun at Chris Rock tonight. Of course. Now, oh my God, thank you. And email me about your dad because everybody wants to see him. <laughs> uh -oh. Are you oh, sure? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm booking for July, so let's have him back. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, all AJ. Right. Thanks, course, AJ. Chris, thanks, you guys. And thanks, all of you, for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at the special time of 10.30 a.m. because I'm speaking at the Real Truth About Health Conference at noon. When my guest is Laura Armitage, she is in her 70s and lost 100 pounds doing exactly what me and Emmy tell everybody to do. Eat starch. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Woo!